In this lesson, you will learn how to find the probability of more than one event occurring. When you are solving for the probability of multiple events occurring, you first need to define your sample space. And here I've written out the definition of sample space. Sample space is the set of possible outcomes. So let's try a problem now to understand how we can find the probability of multiple events happening. Here's the first problem. Sable flipped a quarter three times. He got two heads and one tail. What is the probability of flipping two heads and one tail? So first we need to figure out the sample set of flipping a coin three times. And you can use a tree diagram to draw this out. So I'm going to start, and let's just say there's a quarter, right? Q. Now if you flip this quarter, you have two outcomes. You have heads or tails, right? So heads, tails. Now, this is the first flip. So I'm just going to write that up here first. First coin toss. And we know that Sable flipped three times, so we need to keep going. Now, if you flip this coin again, right, if you got heads first time, the next possible outcomes are heads or tails. And down here, if you got tails the first time and you flip again, you can get heads or tails. So this is the second toss, right? And now let's go through to the third toss. Again, if you flip this guy, you can have heads or tails again. If you got tails in the second trial and you flip again, you can have heads or tails. And the same thing keeps happening down here. If you flip again, you, you have heads or tails, heads or tails. So now let's go in here and count the sample space since this is the third toss, right? The sample space will be the number of events here. So let's count them out. And I've highlighted them in blue. If you count, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now the sample space is 8. And we're going to keep that in mind when we go to find this compound probability. Now the next thing we need to do is look at the information here. It says he got two heads and one tail. So that's H, H, T. Now there are different ways and different combinations as this can happen, but we're not concerned about the combination. We're just concerned about the fact that two heads have to be there and two tails. So I'm going to go through my probability tree here and highlight all of the possible outcomes that will give you two heads and one tail. So if we go here, right, we toss first, we get a heads, then we toss again, we get heads, then we get tails. That's one way of doing it. Now let's go here. What if we have one tail? Okay, now we know we need to get a head and we need another head. So there's two heads and a tail. <clears throat> if now this is one other option. Now there's a third option as well. And I'll highlight that one for you. What if you start and you get heads, so we're back here. Then you get a tail, but then you get heads. So these are three possible ways that you can get two heads and a tail. Now let's think about the sample space. The sample space is eight. So now what we need to do is use division. Since we know that there are three possible ways of getting two heads and a tail, right? That's the time that the event occurs. Now, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there are eight possible outcomes. So now you have three out of eight. So a probability of flipping a coin three times and getting two heads and one tail is three eighths, or if you convert this to a decimal, you get 0 0.375, or this converts to a 37.5% chance that when you flip a coin three times, you get two heads and one tail. Let's try another problem. A street fair is planned for this weekend, but it will only happen if it does not rain. The weather report says that there is a 30% chance of rain on Saturday and a 60% chance of rain on Sunday. What is the probability that the street fair will not go on this weekend? So basically, we're looking for the street fair not going on. And when does that happen? Well, it doesn't go on if it rains, right? Because it says it's only going to happen if it does not rain. So this is a compound event because we need to think about the, f the likelihood that it rains on both Saturday and Sunday. And we have some information, right? The weather report says 30% chance of rain on Saturday. So let's just start to diagram that out. Now, I'm going to begin with just two arrows, okay, and I'll write in what these mean. I'll draw a little yellow sun here, and this means it's going to be nice out, and then I'll draw 
uh, some raindrops, okay? So here are the raindrops, here's the sun. Now we're thinking about the first event. So this is Saturday, okay? What is the probability that it's going to rain on Saturday? Well, weather report says 30%. If we write that as a decimal, it's 0 0.3. So this means that there is a 0 0.3 likelihood or 30% chance that it's going to rain on Saturday, which means there's a 0 0.7 or 70% chance that it's not going to rain on Saturday, that it'll be sunny. Now we need to consider the next event, which is Sunday. So if we go out from here on Sunday, there are two options, right? The first option is sunny, and the second option is rainy. And the same thing goes below. Now as far as Saturday and Sunday are concerned, there are different percent chances of raining. So we see here that there's a 60% chance of rain on Sunday, which means this arrow right here, we're going to put the decimal 0 0.6, which means that there's a 40% chance of it being sunny. Also, down below, you have the same exact probability, 0 0.6 that it's going to rain and 0 0.4 that it's not going to rain. So what we need to do now is calculate the compound probability that it rains on both days. So it raining on both days is represented by this part of the tree, right? Saturday it rains, we get to here. And then Sunday it rains, right, and we get to here. So we're looking at the probabilities of 0.3 and 0.6. To find the compound probability, you're going to use multiplication. So you want to multiply 0 0.3 times 0 0.6. Now because there are two digits after the decimal place in all, we're going to have two digits after the decimal place in our product. And what we're going to do is just multiply. 6 times 3 is 18, which means that the compound probability of it raining on both Saturday and Sunday is 0 0.18. And if we convert this to a percentage, it's 18% likely that the fair will not go on this weekend, which actually isn't so bad because if it's 18% likely that it's not going to happen, it's pretty likely that it is going to happen. In this lesson, you've learned about compound probability. Thanks for watching.